Hi, my name is Connor Delaney. I'd like to welcome you to another episode of MD Insight. And I'm here today with Dr. Jeremy Lipman. Jeremy is a colorectal surgeon, uh, but he also directs our general surgery residency program. So maybe Jeremy, you'd start off by telling us uh, you know, how you manage these roles and, and tell us a little bit about the program. Sure, uh, the program is uh, fantastic, uh, but it gets that way with a lot of support from people that are working with us. We have a fantastic administrative support team. Uh, Janine Kiel, Lisa Pachorek, and Jen Moxerin provide a lot of background work, making sure that all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed. We have a surgical education scientist embedded within the department, Judith French, who is phenomenal at coming up with creative new ideas and programs for us to use, uh, things that aren't being done anywhere else in the country that we're able to run and run well here because of her background and insight. Uh, we also have four associate program directors who work with me to make sure that the different elements of the training program are really well organized. Uh, Ajita Prabhu runs our simulation program. We did a huge overhaul on that a couple years ago, and it's just been fantastic uh, with animal labs and cadaver labs and inanimate labs, making sure the residents are getting that exposure before they get to the operating room. John Rodriguez is in charge of our preliminary program which is a, a big program and a fantastic group of residents. And because of his work and insight, we're able to recruit some of the best trainees from all over the world to come and join us. Uh, Vikram Krishnamurthy took over running our didactic curriculum the last year. Uh, he's also doing a big overhaul and just making sure we're staying fresh and current with what the residents should be learning and that the programs are delivered in a really innovative and exciting way. And just recently, Sophia Aspaugh joined the team as our Associate Program Director for Wellness and Mentorship. Obviously, these are big uh, components of any residency program, but with Sophia's background and her creativity, we're able to design a bunch of new programs uh, around that theme that are really gonna take us to the next level. So that's a lot of support and a lot of people with roles, but that's for a reason. We've put a lot of effort into the strengths of the program, but it's also a huge program. Maybe tell the audience a little bit about the the size of the program and the number of people involved, and also a little bit about where they rotate through, because that's one of the lucky things we have is we have different experiences for the surgical trainees. Yeah, you're right. It's one of the biggest programs in the country. We take 10 categorical residents every year. Uh, and with the preliminary residents and those that are going out and spending time in professional development, we have 75 residents in the program at a time, which is big for a general surgery residency. But like you said, with the resources of the clinic, they have a lot of opportunities to see different clinical experiences at main campus. They go to Hillcrest and they go to Fairview and are fully integrated into all those programs. So they get a very robust experience with everything from a pretty straightforward lap appendectomy to doing intestinal transplants and liver transplants and pediatric surgery and all the complicated stuff that we see here. Yeah, and I, I think we're lucky as well because of the number of hospitals we have and places like Hillcrest and Fairview that we mentioned, honestly, they function like academic medical centers, uh, except for transplant. And yeah. then we have that at main campus. So a hundred great variety. And I think uh, a lot of people coming here don't recognize, I mean, these are 500 bed hospitals, yeah. level two trauma centers. Yeah. You know, it's a fantastic experience for the trainees. Yeah. So tell me a little bit, uh, you mentioned Judith and the work she's doing around research. Tell me some of the exciting projects. I know you have a lot of ideas moving forward uh, from everything from the DDSI Quality Collaborative to other things. What are some of the things you think are top of mind and important for us as we move on? Yeah, our work with the Quality Collaborative has been great. Uh, with Mike Rosen's team, we've been able to integrate uh, resident teaching assessments and feedback right into the Quality Collaborative. And so we've dramatically increased the amount of feedback and uh, uh, direction that the residents are getting after every single case. You know, as we, if we've heard, they're doing, there are thousands of cholecystectomies, for instance, in the database. And each of those is associated with uh, an assessment of a resident and feedback for how they can do it better the next time. So that's really been an exciting opportunity. And are there other areas uh, she's focusing on moving forward? And there's probably some opportunity to integrate that with simulation. Yeah, we're working, uh, as we said, we redesigned the simulation program last year. And our next big initiative is trying to figure out how can we use simulation to give the residents a better sense of where they are and what they need to work on. 
and make sure that they really are coming to the operating room prepared to do the cases that they're doing. Uh, so figuring out what are the elements, uh, for instance, if someone's going to come and, and do laparoscopic suturing in the operating room, they should really have demonstrated that they can do that well on a piece of rubber in the simulation center where there's no risk to anyone. So those are things that we're working on now. Yeah, I think it's incredibly exciting for the future as simulation becomes cheaper to develop models and more feasible to develop models. We won't have the investment of the gaming industry, but hopefully, hopefully we'll get close. So, um, so, and then obviously you're, you're a practicing colorectal surgeon too, so maybe tell me a little bit about your interest there and some of the things you're, you're focusing on. Sure, um, I focus mostly on inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, uh, mostly minimally invasive surgery when appropriate. I also do a lot of work in combination with other teams like our abdominal wall reconstruction team when they have complicated uh, colon or bowel issues associated with those cases, I help them out. Uh, I work with our thoracic surgery team doing the colonic interpositions to replace esophagus for patients that require that. So uh, we also have a, a terrific collaboration with the pediatric surgery program for pediatric colorectal surgery transitions clinic. So for patients that either have complicated adult diseases, the other children, or have, uh, are sort of in that transition time between being children and adults, Tony DeRoss and I run a clinic and a whole program around getting these patients the care they need that sort of spans multiple specialties. Yeah, they're critical, critical areas, and we're lucky we're big enough that we need these transition programs and other things. So finally then, um, Jeremy, talk to me about surgical education moving into the future and all of this effort around controlling hours. Uh, in Europe, the pendulum swung so far, and it's you know, 48 or 50 hours, but people are now spending longer in training because they don't feel adequately trained, particularly in complex specialties. Uh, over here, we're trying to incorporate APPs covering floors and out of hours work to make it more educational for residents. And it's a fairly dynamic space. So what's your perspective moving forward? I think the APPs have been critical. And we've done it so well here, where the APPs and the trainees have their roles, understand them, and work very well together, uh, which I think can be a challenge in other places. The trainees are then able to really focus on the things that are important to them, seeing patients, more time at the bedside, more time in the operating room, and less time doing some of the uh, more clerical work uh, that can be accomplished by others just as effectively, perhaps more. The APPs really get to know the service and the patients and can take care of those things while letting the residents do what they're here to do, which is to become practicing surgeons. Uh, the work hours, it's definitely about making sure that the time that they're here is effective and efficient and getting them prepared. And I think we're doing a great job of that. You know, uh, up to 15% of our graduates go into practice. So they're ready to go out and do it. Most of them come here because they want to do some kind of specialty training and fellowship and have a big academic role. And we're incredibly proud of what they do. So our trainees are, are ready to go out and practice or have the resources to go and get the specialty fellowships that they want. Jeremy, thank you.